All right. Hello, everyone. Paul Tranny here. Diving into having some fun with some bursts of color and bands of gorgeous ribbons and all that fun stuff, right? So we're talking about a certain style that's really popular right now, which is a flat style. And, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and mute that. Oh. And uh, feel free to chime in. We'd love to hear from you. Um, say your name. Say, just, like, say hello. I'm finally home. This is fantastic. So I'm really into just being home. So this is good. Uh, so welcome, Nathan. Uh, Danielle as well. Uh, Miss Ba from Bangladesh. Good to have you here. Uh, fantastic. Gabor. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for joining me. I've been, I feel like I've been away for a long time. Uh, like kind of been all over the place, uh, but not as far away as New Zealand. Like Steve, uh, how does it feel to uh, live on one of the most amazing places in the world? So uh, Nathan's working in Photoshop today. I'm going to be working in Illustrator, uh, but honestly, I, I've done a com I usually do a combo of Photoshop to Illustrator, depending on what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into this. Uh, if you're game, you kind of see what I'm uh, working on. And again, thanks so much for joining me. My name is Paul Tranny, Evangelist for Adobe, broadcasting from beautiful Denver, Colorado. So uh, fantastic. North Carolina in the house. Good, good, good times. All right. So just to give you an idea of what I'm working on, you can see it right here. Cool. Um, this is kind of what I'm working on, and this is what I'm talking about. I kind of turn off the shading here, and you can see just these kind of like nice bands of color that we're working on. R really easy to do, and honestly, you would want to do this sort of thing in, in Illustrator, to be honest with you, and I'm going to show you how, starting from scratch, okay? But my goal with this, by the way, since you did mention Photoshop, uh, I'd maybe layer this in Photoshop and then use the use the... Uh, you know, sort of a brush and, and add the highlighting and all that fun stuff. So that's ultimately where I'd uh, bring this into is into Photoshop. But we're going to start from scratch again with none of this goodness. Let's just start from scratch, as you can see. And in fact, I'm going to turn on show grid. Make sure I'm snapping to that grid and starting with some fun colors. So let's dive into this. Just some hot pink, really into hot pink right now. And these are popular colors. Taking this down uh, about four or five steps, adding maybe a teal, okay? In fact, let's just double check that color. Let's crank it up, crank it up, crank it up. That's more along the lines of what I want, okay? So that's what I'm doing, just kind of creating some, some vibrant colors because I want this to be a vibrant design. This is really going to pop a lot, actually. So with that done, what do we do? We use the blend tool right over here. Blend tool, you know how to do this. Click on an object, click on another object. It's going to make that smooth gradient, okay? Which looks really good. It looks like it is actually twisting, okay? So um, if I select this object, double click on the blend tool, we'll preview the blend options. We'll take this down uh, this number of steps. One, two, three, four. Four steps. I knew it was spinning. I knew it. That's fine. We will just undo this and we'll click again. So again, it's a matter of clicking the correct corner. There we go. That did the trick. Specified steps, four steps, click OK. Now we have our four bands, OK? So um, you can see how that's made. I can take this. I can do some more fun things with it. I can change the color of maybe this one to a yellow. You get the idea. Maybe tone that down a little bit. Now we have a couple different options. All right. So what do we do in order to make these bands of color? You could see it right over here. What did I do? Open up the brushes panel. Hopefully that sounds good to you, Anwar. Hello, my friends. Uh, all right, Honduras is in the house as well. Oakland, cool. I've never been to Oakland. Of all the places I've been, uh, uh, many times I've been in San Francisco, I've never been to Oakland. So taking these, by the way, and I'm going to show you if I try to make it a brush, new brush, 
It's gonna be a pattern brush, as you can see right here. Making a new brush, it's gonna be a pattern brush, clicking OK. There it is, here's my pattern, right? We could start to see, I don't know why, it should just add this auto-centered, but basically, I've added these corners in here. So it knows how to treat those corners, okay? Um, and I'm gonna leave everything alone at this point. I'm gonna click OK. What does it do? It adds that brush right down there. Now we can have fun with drawing. I'll just hit N for pencil, and I'll kind of draw out a swoosh like that, okay? With that done, clicking right there, we can see our fun swoosh, right? We can go beyond that because I can play with uh, the uniformity of this uh, brush as well, okay? So uh, right in here, I'll just change the width profile. You can see what it does, makes it nice and swirly and all that good stuff. Hey everybody, we can, we can start now. CT is here, we can begin now that CT is here. Welcome, my friends. All right, let's do this. All right, uh, oftentimes when I draw out curves and different things, I probably want to simplify the path because there's a lot of points in here and I can take that down. If I take the curve precision up to about 93%, so just look at, it's just going to give me less points, so it's going to make it easier to deal with, okay? And let's change the color of this as well. Let's change it to green. There we go. We can see all those little dots right in there. Let's do that. Object, path, simplify this path. So either making it, giving it more precision, see what it does, and less precision. So less precision just gives me less points, right? I want this to be swooshy. And that's what I'll typically do, is kind of swoosh that around. You can see what it does, obviously, okay? We're gonna go beyond this in a second because I wanna talk more about brushes. Maybe I'll eliminate some points as well. What if I want this To be, oh, I'm, I'm asking myself a question that I actually don't know uh, the answer to. This is fascinating. Okay, so I'm going to select this brush, or this path, excuse me, and I'm going to reverse path direction. You ready for this? Boom. Ah, it did what I thought it was going to do. Um, Ayat, you are in the right place. If you don't know how to use Illustrator, hey, that's why you're here. So thank you for joining me. Let's turn off the snapping. Let's hide the grid. Let's hide the artboards. There we go. Beautiful curves. What happened here? So what if I want this part to be in front of this part? So if you want a part to be front, another part to be behind, that's when we go in and we say, hey, you know what? Reverse that path direction boop and it does the obvious okay i can start to control these points maybe eliminating some i want to get into more of this i'm talking about paths right now i haven't really gotten into color right but there's one cool swoosh right there let's take the second one as well adding this as a brush it's going to be a pattern brush clicking okay how's the music hopefully the music is not too loud Oh yeah, Ivan, I can show you how to do this with the dots and dashes as well. That's a good question. Um, clicking OK. So this is my second one. I made a second brush. In fact, I made a slew of brushes, right? Um, now I can, again, just use the pencil. Let's do a swooshy thing. Adding that second one and adjusting the uniformity of it as well. Two of them. Um, when it comes to dots and dashes, which is a great idea, I could do the same thing right in here. I'll take this, duplicating it, making something different just for Ivan, because that's why we do these things live, so we can answer questions. Um, I will change that to a red for Ivan, uh, maybe a purple. I don't know. This is where I spend most of my time, is just trying to figure out what color to pick. <laughs> uh, help me. All right, let's go with that, right? So we're gonna make these uh, s like circles, rounding that corner, coming in here. Same thing for this, rounding those corners just like that. Now we have circles, okay? Taking that element and again, going to the brushes, making it a brush. That happens to be a pattern brush. That happens to ha 
have those. Oh, this is good. Auto between. This is what I want. Thank you so much for bringing this up. Because this is I want to treat these corners differently. I want... Don't automatically slice it and stretch it. Do do some math to uh, sort of more easily transition those corners since these are dots. Clicking OK, that's what I have. Uh, going back out, hitting N for brush, and now we can see the dot brush right there. Cool. And that's for Ivan. Ah. <sighs> Fantastic. So when would you outline a stroke? Um, well, at this, at some point when you sort of hit a roadblock. And if I wanted to really get into the detail of maybe the shading of these shapes, that's when I would outline it. But for the most part, I don't typically need to. Okay, so that's what I, that's what I have. Uh, let me show you a couple other things as well. Hit N. Zoop. Swirl, we'll integrate this more. I have these different ones as well. Let's take a look at all these different ribbons, right? Going through, selecting these different ribbons. I even have these ribbons right up here. Since you mentioned dots, here's a dot brush. Look at that. Look at how this is made. I won't really get into the detail. Why is this not black? Why is it pink? Hmm, imagine that. Oh, look at that. Pink is the color. I want to change the color of it. Let's change it to that nice teal. Click OK. Oh, thank you very much for changing to teal. How did that happen? We will double click on that brush. And let's take a look. Let's just... Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it. Get it. Get it, Paul. Do your thing. <laughs> um, right down here. This is how that is done. I want to tint the the brush not not the color of the actual brush but the color of this stroke path i want to change this colorization right over here to tints or i can do tints and shades or hue shift but tints will tint something black it will tint it that color and that how is how that is done okay clicking okay um you can see what happens there as i zoom out and maybe change the size of it and the uniformity just for fun okay how's that treated for these well let's take a look duplicating this one or maybe using this one for instance all right so i'm going to change this color to green now i'm going to go into this brush and i'm going to change this to hue shift see what it does it shifts all the hues toward that green. Imagine it on a color wheel. It shifts. I don't even know how to tell which color to shift, but it shifts them as if they're locked together. Okay, so then it moves them around. And that's what the hue shift is doing. We got tints and shades, right? So again, since this is green, it's going to give that tints and shades. Uh, hue shift is pretty cool. That's what I'm going to go with. Apply to strokes. That's right. Right, and here's what I have so far for my illustration. Let's talk about Adobe Max, shall we? Because I happen to have all these cool swooshes now that I can shrink down. Let's turn on and do something. It's amazing how large I was working. Taking something like this, doing some in and out brush strokes, right? Taking a look at this, selecting this brush applying the one that we just made bringing down the size maybe adjusting the uniformity of it and i'm just showing you sort of more of a practical uh real world use case for using these swooshes within an actual design okay let me know if you have questions uh uh so how this perfect dot circle don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Help me out. Yeah, uh, earth tones might be good as well. The cool thing is this this is the power of Illustrator. The fact that I could change the stroke, the shape of it after the fact, do that for me, Photoshop. <laughs> I love Photoshop, but Photoshop can't do that. Just can't, like, after the fact, I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to manipulate this up, right? I want to take this whole shape and stretch it up. Again, just things, Photoshop, file that under things, 
Photoshop can't do. Even though I love Photoshop, they both have their pros and cons, right? We'll take this, we'll start to do some, uh, typically I'll do some like overlapping. So let's take this, let's ungroup it. Let's do some fun things. Taking this, taking this, cutting it, placing it on top, boop, like that. And now I can start to deal with a sort of like in and out look, right? How is this, the curves of this, how how's this work out, right? Let's just get rid of some of these points. This is why I get rid of these points because when it comes to, um, you know, Illustrator and when you start to add these shapes, you get these, sometimes these really funky, funky shapes right in there because it's just such a thick line, okay? And let's add, by the way, I, I don't want to add a uniform, um, oh, I could use the width tool. So coming in and selecting this with the tool, I can make it thinner there, thicker here, right? And right over here, again, the same process, maybe making it thinner if I want to, like that, and then making it thicker over here, right? Controlling the width of that line, stretching that out, bringing that down, maybe flipping it. Let me know if you have more questions. I'm gonna flip that and now I'm just kind of working with this, kind of like as, as we do as artists to get something interesting. Ah. There we go, it's a little better, it's getting better. Don't judge me just yet, I'm still working on it. Still working on it. Bringing that out right here. Uh, let's take a look at this. You ready for this part? I want this to actually get cut off right there. Um, what I can do is I can actually use the width tool. Remember, it was like super small right there. I can make it wider like that, and then I'll just make sure this is at is like perpendicular to that line right there. So selecting that point, moving that up, it's perpendicular. Now it looks like it's kind of melting into it and I can still use the width tool, maybe right over here. Zoop. All right, uh, Scott enjoys watching the process. That's what I wanna hear. How do you close open paths for illustrations? Um, so I should be, yeah, I'm reading YouTube chat. Sorry, sorry I missed that. Hello, uh, MoChamp. I was just busy designing. Uh, great question. Ah, oh, so much to do. So much to do here. Minus. Um, close paths. You typically will join, and that's under the, under object path. That's where you would do it. And you'll select join. Um, there's another, uh, there's another tool that will do it as well that I can't think of right now. Join selected paths. Let's go ahead and subtract this one. There we go. The less points, the smoother curves we have. Whoop. I'm so hard on my keyboard, my command key like hardly works. At this point, it just just is. <laughs> I gotta really like. I gotta I gotta press it like really hard. Um. There we go. Works for me. We have that swooshing around. You get the idea. Uh. Ch -ch -ch Uh, can you install different brushes inside of Illustrator? Yes, you can, and that's what I would typically do. I have like so many. I have so many, like, and that's what we'll do. We'll take this. We we might like this. It needs more work. I get it. Uh, bringing this down here. Let's take a look at some of these different brushes. Okay. Uh, first off, you can. Let's go to Window, Brush Libraries, right in here. Um, you have a number of brushes. Let's go into Decorative. Uh, 
elegant curl and floral brush set. Okay, as just as an example. We see we have them here, and then let's go to window, brush libraries, other library. Here's where you can load in a brush file. So the question is, how can you, I don't know if you're interested in uh, exporting out your own brushes, but what I typically do is I, I make my own and then I make my own startup file. So I have my own startup file that's called All You Need. So this is where I've placed, usually to bring in brushes, I just do a copy and paste from the other file to my current file, but then I'll make this file, it's called All You Need. So this is actually a template file you can make, um, saving it as a template and we'll see, um, see it open here in a second. All right, so it doesn't look like there's anything in here under this all you need file. It's like, looks, it's all you need. If, if you want just something empty, then yeah, it's all you need. But if we take a look at the brushes in here, this is the all you need file that I have. So if I wanna make a, oh, uh, where's my fun snake brush? Ew, snake. Actually, let's do, there we are, like that. You get the idea, okay? There's my snake brush. Okay, um, so if I wanted this brush in my current file, I typically just do a copy and then a paste. And then I can use that, that snake brush, right? I wanna reverse the direction path, reverse path direction. Now we can see that snake head is right over there. Okay, um, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I, to answer, I have not fully answered your question because I actually, I've never made a brush file that I actually needed to import. So I'll have to, I just never crossed that bridge. Um, but that's a, something I need to take a look at for sure. Uh, there's one, here's another one. Something like that. Cool. Good vibes from uh, uh, Loisa. I appreciate that. And again, we have a number of fun options in here. This kind of gets away the from the color theme that I was doing. I'm actually just showing you brushes. I'll end up making something like this, and I'll go ahead and show you as I turn on some of these other files. You can see what's happening in here, right? So using those brushes, created what I want in here. And again, all these are done with these different paths, as you can see, as I manipulate them accordingly. Uh, just trying to get some interesting shapes, okay? Then what I will do, uh, as I kind of wind down, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, just to recap, these were all done with some basic shapes, right? like these basic shapes, we can see them here, and then I just converted them to a brush, just like that. Happens to be a pattern brush, there it is, and you are done, right? So that's how those are done, and that's how these are made. When it comes to shading, I wanna add, maybe some parts need to be darker, some parts should probably be lighter. Uh, I will just kind of draw out a square. Okay, so here's my square. Square is gonna actually be a burst. So here's my black burst, which again, it's, it's just making it look muddy. So I'll take that shape, I'll go in to, under opacity, I will change the blend mode. So the blend mode, I'll change down to like overlay. I set that to overlay and now we can see how we get that nice shading. So it's gonna flow darker down there. Let's move this over. You know, I can put it somewhere else right over here and you can see the shading that's happening. Cool. Ah. Nathan does art on Adobe Draw and then sends to Illustrator but can you send Illustrator files with layers to Adobe Draw? No, not that I'm aware of. No, you're not gonna be able to because Illustrator Draw just 
it's it's not like the full-fledged Photoshop. It's not going to know how to interpret most of that stuff that you've created. Your best option is to bring in like bring in an image to be honest with you. Um, but good thoughts. I think that's that's a that's an important thing to uh, to consider to be honest with you. Typically, you don't need to go from you know necessarily you don't necessarily need to go from uh, desktop to mobile. It's more typically people start out on mobile and they end up on desktop to finish it, but obviously you might want to do that. So that's all good. Adding some shading right in here, as you can see. Just some shading, shading. I call it shading. It's just basically adding an image that's set to overlay and changing that color as well. Changing it to white. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we are. There's the highlights. That's nice as well. See that? Boom. Boom. Hopefully you're experiencing that goodness. Uh, yeah, Valder, exactly. Maybe in the future can we can have uh, Illustrator for iPad. Uh, don't worry, not to say that we have not thought of that. Um, it's kind of more like what, what would you want to see um, in Illustrator for the iPad. I, I thoroughly agree. And uh, yeah, maybe we're working on something. Wink, wink. All right, there we are. Adding some highlights down here. Cool, 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 cool. Good. Hopefully that works. These are all brushes. Sidey. Hopefully you know that I could change this at any time so I have full flexibility, which is fantastic. Yeah, Nathan. So that's that's the best way. So you're working on Illustrator Draw. Just bring it in as an image. And uh, there you have it. My complete design done in, you know, like 20 minutes. So uh, again, I think it's I think it's cool. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. I hope you do. Uh, that's all I have for you. So uh, I will go ahead and post this just so you know to the wonderful. Well, come back to me. Come back to me. There I am. Ah, there we go. My, my camera reset. Um, I'm going to post this to the, the wonderful Instagram. Zip, boop, boop, boop. At least my final as I spend some more time working on it. So uh, check it out there as I kind of. What's up with my hair? Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. Have a, a great day. I'm going to let everybody go. Nathan, Mathalia, Hassan, I, I, uh, Saidi, I just really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this beautiful Monday. Let me know what you want to hear. Follow me on all these uh, social media channels, and um, I'm open to suggestions if you want to know um, how to do more things because uh, I'm, I'm trying to make this valuable for you as designers. So hopefully you're into what you see. Um, and thanks for so much for, for, for keeping me company today. I really appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. We'll be in touch. Thanks, everybody.